Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Thursday, October 25th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Once again, Facebook is in the public eye about privacy, but what's the one thing Facebook doesn't want to share? Also, why doesn't Australia trust Huawei? Here to answer these questions, we're now joined by SiliconANGLE contributing editor, John Casaretto. Welcome, John. Good morning. A blogger by the name of Bogo, who hosts a technology blog, recently posted that he was able to purchase more than one million Facebook entries containing full name, email, and Facebook profile URL for the bargain price of just five U.S. dollars. The availability of this list raises some questions about Facebook user privacy and Facebook's handle on its vast amount of data. How do we know this information is legitimate, John? Well, uh, according to the offer and what Bogo is reporting, um, uh, what was included in the list uh, was collected through um, a bunch of uh, Facebook apps. Um, so, and uh, the list is regularly updated, um, and they try to eliminate duplicates and um, invalid emails. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I mean, the situation is is that there's a lot of uh, uh, nefarious uh, operators out there that have, um, you know ways of uh, collecting information um, and releasing apps and getting people to volunteer their information. It's a bit of social engineering, if you will. Not all that different from Facebook itself. Um, so it's interesting that they put a collection together like this and are offering it for sale for that cheap. Why was the list available for purchase and who would have access to the Facebook information to create such a list? Well, you know, quite often what, what people don't realize is that when they install applications and they install the Facebook apps or they, you know, thumbs up and like something um, or a video app, you, I'm sure you've seen those, um, they give away quite a bit of uh, information. Um, they, they agree to share information. They agree to let applications post to their wall, if you will. Um, you know, a bunch of things like that happen. So, um, again, there's a market out there for these kinds of things, uh, a, not really a black market per se, but there are internet marketers and things like that that are willing to pay for, you know, position, the ability to spread their message, um, you know, pretty easily and, and kind of cheat that way to get their products, whatever it may be, um, out there in front of people. Someone from the Facebook policy department contacted BOGO. Their conversation was recorded and the Facebook official asked that BOGO not share the information about their conversation in his profile or blog. The Facebook authority also asked that BOGO send the file he acquired to Facebook and to delete any evidence of it he may have. He was also asked to hand over website transaction information from the website he purchased the list from. BOGO agreed to hand over the data and asked what action Facebook would take next, but Facebook replied saying it would be an internal le legal investigation and that they would not share any information with third parties. So why would Facebook want to keep this information quiet? Well, Facebook has a history of privacy issues and privacy concerns in, in the, the public forum. Um, so that's something that uh, they definitely want to uh, keep a, a handle on um, and, and kind of keep suppressed if they can, if it's a, a major issue, if there's been a violation of their terms of service. Is something they definitely would want to uh, isolate and, and make sure, you know, got the minimum publicity altogether. Bogo also asked if it was possible to tell what the problem was after they finished the investigation so that users could protect themselves, and he was met with the same reply. Do you think Facebook was aware that this data was being so easily accessible? Yeah, I think the nature of the data is probably uh, something that they're aware of, that uh, um, there are, you know, people that are writing apps that, that collect information. Um, I think that probably, possibly, if there was anything that was a, would be a surprise, would be the fact that it was being op sold openly um, in such a way, and in, particularly at such a rate, and uh, apparently rather publicly. So, What kind of action do you think Facebook should take to rectify the privacy leak? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think that they'll, they'll try to find the source of this potentially shut down the uh, whoever has written the applications, um, or at least lock them out for a period of time and, you know, slap on the head and make sure that, you know, this information isn't something that's being sold um, as openly as it is um, for, for the purposes that it is. I mean, partnerships are one thing, you know, uh, I'll share my list with you, you know, you're a partner, but just kind of openly selling the, the people's information like that, their emails and their, you know, all, the, all the information they could possibly gather. Um, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big violation of privacy, and I think that uh, 
Facebook is, is that's why they're looking into this and taking this quite seriously. Should users be concerned that their privacy is out there and available? What can we do to protect ourselves as users? Again, express caution that uh, you install the, 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 uh, the minimum number of apps that you can. Um, you know, express caution uh, in installing, you know, different things that uh, have access to your page, what you're giving up. Um, you know, uh, t you just stick with the trusted names would be the most, the, the biggest thing. But, you know, Facebook is all about your information. It's all your information out there. Um, so you give that up when you, when you come to the site. Your information is already there. It's just a matter of controlling what you do with that information and how openly you engage with that. So that'd probably be the biggest thing. The Chinese telecom business Huawei has offered to give Australia unrestricted access to its software source code and equipment in an attempt to defuse speculation that it might be a security threat. Questions have been raised about the company's ties to the military, something it has denied. Where did these questions originate from? Well, there's been a history of, of Huawei um, in, in the market out there. Uh, you know, they're a telecom giant. Um, they're a huge competitor to Cisco worldwide. Um, they haven't had a lot of traction here in the U.S., um, and that's because of a bunch of uh, um, actions uh, that uh, Cisco and other uh, telecom manufacturers have put forward uh, to try to stop to stem the tide of, of Huawei's influence. Um, they are a very uh, cutthroat, low price manufacturer of uh, network and telecom gear. Um, they've been accused of a number of things from, you know, uh, cyber espionage, corporate espionage, uh, building things with, uh, you know, blatantly copied code um, to, you know, utilizing, um, you know, China's infrastructure to uh, build low cost, uh, you know, undercutting basically um, manufacturers here. So, yeah, there's a pretty rich history of those kinds of things. Um, and also probably the biggest thing and the focus of this story um, would be, you know, the fact that, you know, Huawei, any Chinese uh, company um, is, has to be really kind of um, reviewed to see how closely they are tied to the Chinese government. There is no Chinese uh, company that is not under the influence of the, the state, uh, per se, in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's just a matter of how closely they suspect that they might be tied to that. And with network equipment, it, it can be pretty critical. Why is Huawei now giving access to Australia? Well, they were denied um, a couple of years ago uh, a, a major contract to help build some um, rollout national infrastructure there. Um, again, this has come into play over and over, repeated stories from uh, across the world and particularly here as well. Um, the, the fact that uh, there's a lot of suspicion of, of Huawei's intent. Um, there's uh, talk of a code that uh, you know, has a back door um, that could open the door to espionage. When you're talking about critical core infrastructure, um, you know, it's a big deal. The endpoint is one thing. Cheap hardware on your desk is one thing. But when you're talking about core pieces of infrastructure um, on the Internet for a banking institution, for, you know, defense contractor, you know, those kind of things, you know, they bear some, some uh, review, and that's what they've been the big issue here. Huawei said it needed to dispel myths and misinformation. They're taking a collaborative approach with Australian authorities to resolve any miscommunication. What else are they doing to work with Australia? Well, there's been some proposals um, that have been put forward to uh, uh, basically work collaboratively and uh, create a uh, cyber evaluation center um, to test equipment, um, to look at those kinds of things, and I think that's kind of where we're, we're going with this, uh, where Huawei's going with this and opening up, you know, their code and opening up their uh, um, access to their uh, source code and uh, all their equipment, everything that they have um, to try to assuage some of those concerns. In your opinion, what else does Huawei need to do to gain the trust of Australia and other countries? Well, yeah, I think that this is a good first step. Um, I think that, uh, you know, really kind of building a history and taking those those baby steps into, you know, a position where it's trusted, get some win stories. I mean, they could certainly, you know, start to turn a lot of this around. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, it, it's something that um, it continues. It's kind of this, uh, this theory of working together with countries and uh, being open. And I think this is a step in the right way. Well, John, thanks so much for your time. And it was great to have you on. Thank you very much.
And remember, you can follow the news of the day and get the latest breaking analysis here at News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.